Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Superpower User, a YouTube channel focused on hardware reviews, computer builds, and tutorials. Today I want to talk about some of the rumors that we've been hearing about the 16-inch MacBook Pros and also make some speculations of my own on it. The MacBook Pro is something that's very near and dear to my heart because I've been using MacBooks for over the last decade. Uh, in fact, the very first MacBook that I've owned was the 13-inch polycarbonate black MacBook. And ever since then, I've actually moved on to the 15-inch, the Unibodies, the Retina MacBook Pros, even the, Thun the Thunderbolt MacBook Pros as well. So um, I would usually upgrade every couple years, sell my old one, get a new one. And the one I've got here, the 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro uh, from... 2017 is a couple years old so I'm also I'm in the market again for upgrading. The rumors of the 16-inch MacBook Pro started about six months ago and it originated from the analyst Min Chi Kuo who is very uh, well known in the Apple rumors uh, community. So he is an analyst that has connections to the supply chain and his predictions have been very accurate. Uh, in fact probably one of the most accurate uh, analysts to predict and you know talk about future Apple products. So in February of this year, 2019, he basically dropped a bombshell of a report that talked about the 31 31.6 inch 6K monitor from Apple. Uh, talked about the Mac Pro. Talked about the new iPhones that's coming out later this year. And also in that report, he talked about how there was going to be a 16 to 16 and a half inch MacBook Pro coming out for 2019. So this was the first time we've heard about it. And it was very interesting because at the time, there was a lot of people who completely disregarded this prediction because the current MacBook Pro 15 inch and 13 inch are about three years into its cycle. So uh, we've had three generations so far and it came out in 2016, so 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2016, 2017, 2018, about three or three and a half years into the cycle for the current generation of MacBook Pros. Uh, Apple usually has four, four year cycles between they completely refresh or redesign their MacBook Pros. So, um, we had a late 2018 refresh of the MacBook Pros, and then um, it was said that this is too soon for a complete redesign. And the thinking was that the 13 and the 15 inch MacBook Pros would get a complete redesign in 2020. The next time we heard about MacBook Pros larger than 15 inches was again by Min Chi Kuo in April of 2019. And in this report, he was focusing in on the displays and talking about the different, I guess, display suppliers. And he talks about the 31.6 inch monitor, he talks about a 10 to 12 inch iPad, and here he says, a 15 to 17 inch MacBook Pro equipped with mini LED backlight unit is slated for quarter one or two of 2021. So this may initially seem like it goes against the previous report about a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, where he was saying, you know, the 15 to 17 inch MacBook Pro with mini LED backlight unit for quarter one, two of 2021. But the way I interpret this is that the current 16 inch MacBook Pro that we're talking about for 2019 is gonna be a traditional LED uh, display while the next generation mini LED with the local dimming and backlight, whatever, is slated for 2021. Uh, probably the same technology as what we saw in the XDR 31.6 inch uh, Apple display. This report kind of muddied the waters a little bit, but to me it was pretty clear that they were talking about two separate things. Shortly after this report, Apple refreshed the 15 inch MacBook Pros in May of 2019 with the 8 core processor from Intel, the 9980HK uh, Coffee Lake refresh processor. Um, Apple also updated the keyboard slightly and um, 
that was basically the 2019, mid 2019 refresh for the MacBook Pros. So a lot of people said, well, shoot, Apple couldn't be possibly be releasing a brand new MacBook Pro later this year, especially since we just got a refresh in May. But to me, the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pros, uh, whatever they're gonna be called, and the 15 inch existing MacBook Pros can coexist at the same time in Apple's product stack. So a little bit more on that later, but to me, the refresh of the 15 inch MacBook Pros really didn't mean much. Then over the last couple of weeks in July, we got a flurry of rumors about brand new keyboard switches, the scissor switches made of glass fiber. Uh, we also got more reports of the 16 inch MacBook Pros from Michi Kuo, along with a table of the suppliers and uh, the different supply ratios all the way through 2021. And it seems to me like it's this rumor has finally gotten enough traction where people truly believe that we are gonna be getting a 16 inch MacBook Pro for later this year. This rumor has been regurgitated enough times and in different ways that uh, even the mainstream news outlets, uh, The Verge, Engadget, whatever, they've started picking up on it and reported that perhaps indeed we may be getting a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So let's talk about some of the specifics we think we know about this computer and I'm gonna throw in some of my own speculation as well. So first, the form factor. The form factor of this MacBook Pro is probably gonna be very similar to the existing 15 inch MacBook Pro, but with a 16 inch screen size uh, in the same footprint. That's not to say that um, Apple won't be completely redesigning it from the ground up because this is a perfect opportunity for Apple to redesign the cooling solution to be able to properly cool the six and eight core processors and future processors from Intel. We can reasonably predict that Apple will be tooling up to produce this computer for the next four or so years. So they need to take into account all the new processors from Intel uh, that's coming down the line. For example, the 10 core Comet Lake H processors that's slated for 2020. With the new redesign, it's also a perfect opportunity for Apple to completely revamp the keyboard. Uh, we've had whispers of the new switch mechanism, the new scissor mechanism, along with the glass fiber material uh, to make the switches possible. And this will be the perfect opportunity to get the new switch in the new design and have a fresh start with this new design. So let's talk about the screen. Uh, besides the larger screen size, the technology behind the screen is probably gonna be very similar to the existing screens. Uh, what that basically means is that the mini LED technology with the full array local dimming that we've seen in the 31.6 uh, inch XDR Apple Cinema or Apple Display XDR or whatever it's called, we're not gonna be seeing that in the laptop because it's too power hungry, it's too hot, it's too bulky. Uh, we'll probably be seeing that in 2021, as Min Chi Kuo says. We're also probably not going to be seeing an OLED display in this MacBook Pro because it's one, extremely expensive, and two, uh, the technology is still 12 to 16 months out. All right, so let's talk about processors. Generally, Apple's 15-inch MacBook Pros use Intel's H series of processors, uh, which are come in around 45 watts of TDP. The Coffee Lake H processors uh, came out about 2018 and the refresh of these processors refreshed around early quarter two of 2019. Uh, the 9980HK being one of the Coffee Lake refresh processors. So we are not slated to get another H series processor until 2020, which may come in the form of Comet Lake H. Um, between now and 20, quarter two of 2020, that basically means all of the processors that are potentially uh, suitable for this computer is already out on the market. Meaning we may very well see that eight core 9980HK in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. However, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and predict that the 16 inch MacBook Pro isn't gonna be using the 9980HK. It's gonna be using the e Xeon E2286M processor, 
which is the brother of the 9980HK, but the Xeon version. If you look at the MSRP of the 9980HK 8-core processor, that comes in at $583. And if you look at the E2286M Xeon processor, that comes in at $623. So it's actually kind of similar within ballpark of each other. Uh, it clocks, the Xeon counterpart clocks from 2.4 all the way to 5 gigahertz, and it's eight cores, hyper-threading. Um, the only main difference between the two processors is the Xeon version supports ECC memory. Apple seems to be retargeting the pro market with their latest versions or latest entries of computers. You've got the iMac Pro that came out a couple, I wanna say a year and a half ago now, um, with the 18 core Xeon processor with ECC memory. The Mac Pro that's coming out later this year with a 28 core Xeon W processor with ECC memory. And I think that this MacBook Pro 16 inch is gonna be for the pro market with a eight core Xeon processor and ECC memory. That also means that this 16 inch MacBook Pro is gonna slot in above the current 15 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, it's gonna be geared towards a different market. So you've got your consumers with the 13 inch and 15 inch MacBook Pros of the current design. And then you've got this 16 inch MacBook Pro target, targeted purely for uh, professionals, meaning uh, video and photo editors, uh, media producers or whatever. It also gives Apple a excuse to charge a $3,000 starting price on the 16 inch MacBook Pro and give you bare minimum specs for that price. So speaking of price, if we take a look at the current 15 inch MacBook Pro, uh, we can see that it starts at $2,400 for the base, and for the upgraded version, it starts at $2,800. And even with the $2,800, you're only getting 16 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabytes of SSD, and it's a 2.3 gigahertz eight core processor base clock. Once you upgrade to 32 gigabytes of memory, upgrade the uh, GPU, and then add the one terabyte SSD option, you're up in the range of $3,700 for this computer. So a starting price of 3,000 is well within reason for a 16 inch MacBook Pro. And really a moderately spec 16 inch MacBook Pro pushing $4,000 really isn't that unreasonable when you compare it to how quickly it adds, the 15, current 15 inch adds up. And if we were to speculate some more, it's possible that this laptop may come with Face ID. Um, and the reason why I say may is because historically, MacBook Pros have had pretty crap webcams. When you compare, especially when you compare it to uh, iPhone X or XS's front-facing Face ID camera. Uh, the main reason comes down to the thickness of the screen and it just the ability to put a camera, a high quality camera, webcam, in the lid of the screen. Uh, when you compare the thickness of this lid and then compare it to that, the thickness of the iPhone, uh, you kind of see why um, you just basically don't have the extra thickness to be able to put a very high quality webcam. Perhaps the, Apple has figured it out with their front facing face ID. Uh, maybe we'll have a little bud, uh, bump and or maybe we'll have a notch, <laughs> heaven forbid, in the screen to be able to get that Face ID technology in the laptop. It'd be a nice to have, but I think this might be a 50-50 on that. Another thing I would personally like to see on this wish list that, of course, no one has ever talked about is a Apple branded uh, GPU enclosure or a eGPU, basically. Um, especially with the new Mac Pro that's been coming out with the MPX modules with the dual GPUs along with the Afterburner uh, you know, video editing card that's going, for, going with the Mac Pro. I think it's a perfect opportunity for Apple to release its own eGPU enclosure or eGPU 
appliance, basically, with either the MPX module or the afterburner module. Recently, Final Cut Pro has been able to take advantage of external GPUs, and I think it's a perfect opportunity for Apple to truly leverage external GPUs uh, more integrated with the system or with Mac OS and with the computer. When you compare the capabilities of the CPU versus the GPU on the laptop, you can clearly see that the CPUs are actually very powerful compared to what you can get on the desktop, but the GPU is just underpowered because you just don't have the thermal headroom to be able to clock, so, clock it high enough or to have enough power draw. So a external GPU that's Apple supported, Apple branded, whatever, can really help boost the productivity and boost the performance of such a laptop and have, and especially if it's got Apple, you know, first party support, I think it would be a great thing for her, for professionals or for people who are looking for that extra bit of power um, from a MacBook Pro who isn't actually willing to go to the iMac Pro or the, uh, the Mac Pro and, and just want to stick with a laptop form factor. Overall, I think the 16-inch MacBook Pro is one of the most exciting Apple rumors uh, to come out in the last few years. And it really is refreshing to see that uh, Apple really focusing in on the Mac hardware, especially with, with the Mac Pro um, and now the new laptops. So hopefully by the end of this year, I'll have a brand new laptop in my hands and I'll make sure to do a review on it and do lots of benchmarks and use scenarios. Um, if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button to get notified once those videos go up. And if you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps the channel, with, especially with YouTube's algorithm, and it's free and easy to do. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys did that. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.